we all night hard to be with you, to be with you is all I want, is all I want. Every voice in the house say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my heart, to be with you, to be with you, is all I want, is all I want. One more time, every voice, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my heart, to be with you, to be with you, is all I want, is all I want. We love you, Lord. We love you, our God. We love you, our King. We love you because you first loved us. We love you because you saved us. We love you because you gave your all for us. We love you because you put us first. We love you because of your everlasting love, your loving kindness towards us. We are grateful. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated in God's awesome, wonderful presence. Today we are looking at the theme, Go Forward. That's the theme God has given unto us in the month of December. Go forward. By the special grace of God, we are moving forward into 2020. How many people are excited about that? Just wave at me. We are moving into 2020 and we are moving forward into it. And we're going to need assistance in moving forward. If you are in a vehicle, you would notice that it is a lot quicker to move forward in a car or if you are comparing that with a bicycle. A car will move forward faster. And then if you want to travel from here to Spain, for instance, and you wanted to go by car, you would discover that there's something that can take you there faster. It's a plane. So a plane can move faster than a car. So there are different modes of transportation that will enable us to go forward. You can use your legs. You can say, you know what, I want to keep feet. Maybe you want to make an attempt to walk from here to Spain. If you're alive by the time you get there, it will be a miracle. You may say, I want to use a bicycle. You're still going to have to, you know, Put in your own energy because you have to cycle those wheels. You can say, I want to go there by car. You have to drive the car yourself. You have to buy fuel in the car. You have to do all the various bits and bobs before your car can be fit to be on the road. Or you can say, you know what? I'm the smart one. I'll pay somebody else to do it for me. I'll go by plane. Which one do you prefer? Let me hear you. Because on the plane, you can be sleeping. You can be eating, you can be chatting with your friend, and yet you are still going forward to your desired destination. So tell me, how many people want to do the walking? Okay, they didn't come to church today. <laughs> how many people want to ride on a bicycle to Spain? They didn't come to church either. How many people want to drive to Spain? Me. How many people want to fly to Spain? Me. Ah, some of you don't want to do anything. How many people want to fly to Spain? Okay. Well, is it like the plane or flight? Plane. I, I, that was why I took my time to do the description earlier on. Uh huh. So, good students, you want to fly by plane, it's easier. You can even be sleeping. You know, somebody else is doing the work. So, there's so many ways of getting to our destination. Some are not so easy. Some you have to put in too much effort, and some. You just glide. So today we are going to look at the power to go forward. We all want to move forward and we need power. We need assistance to be able to move forward. Luke 11, 5 to 13. 
Luke 11, 5 to 13. And he said unto them, Which of you have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now, it's a very interesting story. It starts off by someone going to visit a friend of his because someone came to visit him also and he doesn't have anything to entertain them with. So he goes to his friend at midnight and says, I need help. I need to host a friend of mine that has come visiting, but I don't have anything to give. And the Bible says that friend is going to rise up at midnight to assist, not because he's a friend, but because of the time he came to ask. And then the Bible moves on from there. And then it goes to talk about us as parents, that we know how to give good gifts to our children. He says if they ask us, you know, for egg or for bread, we're not or for fish, we're not going to give them a serpent. We're not going to give them anything deadly. We're going to give them the thing they need. And then it now jumps, you know, almost like, without warning or without notice to verse 13. It says, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more for your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Where did that come into it? It's almost like Jesus said all of that to capture their attention, like I've said this morning. So I've, I've gone through all that whole text to capture your attention. And he's now saying, look, the one thing I'm asking for you to ask for is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that will enable you. He's the one that's energizing you. He's the one that's empowering us. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus Christ said all that he said before, just to capture the mind of the people that look, if you as parents know how to give good gifts to your children, if you as a good friend will rise up and help your friend when they come to you at midnight, and you're looking at the awkwardness of the time and you're saying, wow, they must be quite desperate. If we show such desperacy and our friends rise up to give us, if our children have the need and we as parents rise up to meet that need, how much more our Heavenly Father will give, up the Holy, give us to the Holy Spirit when we ask of Him. So the pointer here is not really so much to the friend who helps or to the parent who performs a parental duty. This scripture is also really focusing our attention on the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit is abundantly available to us. All we need to do is show our desperation. All we need to do is ask. And the Holy Spirit will empower us to go forward. He's the one that empowers the believers. He's a source of life for the believer. That's why the Bible refers to him as another helper, another comforter, the one who will teach, the one who will guide, the one who will instruct us so that we can move forward the way that we have to. Doesn't matter how big your vehicle is. Doesn't matter how beautiful it is. Doesn't matter how new your vehicle is. If there's no diesel in it or petrol in it, where is that car going to go? Nowhere. That car will go absolutely nowhere. It doesn't matter how big we are. It doesn't matter how strong we are. Without the Holy Spirit also, 
we won't be able to go far. In fact, we won't be able, be able to even start, let alone go far. And my prayer is that God will empower us to go forward Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are told to ask for the Holy Spirit because he's the driver. He's the one that knows where the pitfalls are. He's the one that knows where the right places are. He's the one that knows where the booby traps are. He's the one that knows where the quick route is. How many people use sat nav, you know, for those who drive? Waze. Or you have your tom tom. The various things that we use. If you are going to a place you've never been before, try going there without any assistance. If you get there at all. You know, I remember once, several years ago, my husband and I, we wanted to go somewhere in Hackney. You will not believe it. We got to Hackney and then we drove round. I think we must have driven round for about an hour. We could not find a place. Guess what we did? We went back home. We could not find the house. We just could not, it, it, we could not find it. It was, we had to drive all the way back home. <coughs> it was that bad. Who knows? Maybe if we, if there was ways in those days. Oh, that today was just punching the postcode, and it would take us straight to the right house. We could not find it. We were t- parambulating. After a while, we just thought, you know what? This is ridiculous. Let's just go back home. Maybe it is not meant to be. Therefore, we need assistance to get to where we are going. That was why I said that. So the Holy Spirit, if you like. Is the one that helps us to navigate our journey. Amen. So we can get there without fatigue. We can get there without burning out. We can get there without having to use too much energy. Too much energy without having to do all of that. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. John 14, 26. John 14, 26. And I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. It says, but the comforter. In other words, the counselor the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and to act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall. He will remind you, he will bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. Now do you see why we have issues? The Holy Spirit is the one who will teach us. He's the one who will even remind us of the things that we ought to know or the things we have learned. He's the one who is our strengthener. That is why without him, moving forward is practically impossible. So let's look at those attributes, one after the other. Counselor. Who is the counselor? A counselor is someone who gives you counsel and advice. And the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. You want to do a business, what do you do? You go and look for many people who have done it before. And then you seek advice from them. What shall I do? And then someone says do this. And then you begin to compare and contrast the different advices that has been given to you. That is a multitude of counsel. And the Bible says there is safety. The Holy Spirit is a counselor. A counselor is someone who is especially licensed professionally, who treats people with mental, emotional, and behavior disorders and problems. That's a counselor. You know, in the secular, that person is there to treat people, to counsel them, to guide them. A counselor could also be a person who advises students or others on personal problems and academic and occupational choice. So just picture the Holy Spirit. He's a, he can guide you on the choices you ought to make, even academically, even maritally, even business, even economically. The Holy Spirit is there as a counselor. We're moving into 2020. I pray that we'll move forward gloriously and gallantly in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 9 6. Isaiah 9 6 says, For unto us a, ch- a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, 
and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So even Jesus is regarded as a counselor. And we have another comforter who also takes the place of a counselor. You need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to be our counselor. To be our counselor. To counsel us. To say, do this, don't do that. There's sometimes the, the, uh, a myriad of choices in front of you. And you don't know which one to pick. You're saying, Holy Spirit, please help me. Teach me what to pick. Just tell me what to pick. And you have a witness in your spirit. Pick this one. And you pick it. And at the end of the day, you are rejoicing. Why? Because you listened to the voice of the counselor. My prayer is that as we are moving into the new year, we will all listen to the voice of the counselor who will tell us, this is the way. Walk therein. In Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit is the advocate. Someone who argues our case. I don't know many of, how many of us watch all these um, crime, crime offenses and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you've ever seen an, a, a, a lawyer argue a case that you thought was already lost. But the lawyer is so good, they've done their research, done their homework, and they're able to argue that case, and the person that you thought was going to be guilty comes out guilt-free. <coughs> the Holy Spirit is our advocate. Many of us won't even have a clue how to argue our case, let alone win it. But the Holy Spirit will argue your case. When the accuser of the brethren stands before God and says, you don't qualify, the Holy Spirit will stand as the advocate and say, look, the blood of Jesus has washed that vessel. So he or she now qualifies. Oh, the devil says, oh, she hasn't done anything to merit it. He hasn't done anything to merit it. The Holy Spirit says, Lord Jesus. Look at the blood of Jesus. He is he's the advocate. He will argue our case. And we shall not be disappointed. Amen. He will intercede on our behalf. Amen. Just like a lawyer does in a court case. 1 John 2, 1 to 2. 1 John 2, 1 to 2. And it says, My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sin. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. He is the go-between. He is the standby. So if you like, whatever role Jesus Christ plays as the advocate, the Holy Spirit, in whose dispensations we are in, now plays that role as the advocate who will speak on our behalf. The Bible says we don't even know how to pray. But it says the Holy Spirit intercedes, you know, through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So brethren, go to the Holy Spirit and say, please be my advocate. I always pray a prayer for myself. I say, God, be my voice where I have no voice. There's some quarters where you can't speak. But God can be your voice. God can speak for you and in, the, in his role as the advocate so that you will be able to go forward. Another role that the Holy Spirit plays, he's the intercessor. Intercessor. A go-between. Similar role to the advocate. A negotiator. A link between two parties in order to reach a settlement. The one who mediates is similar to, the, to that role of a counselor. So if, by the time I'm speaking, you will see that some of them are almost intertwined. But he has the role of an intercessor. And the scripture I quoted earlier, Romans 8, 26 to 27. Romans 8, 26 to 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints 
according to the will of God. He makes intercessions for us. You know, you know what I like about the Holy Spirit? He not only tells us what to ask God, he also presents our case to God as well. Isn't it amazing? When you're praying in the Spirit, God, you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit is praying through us, targeted, accurate, you know, you know, if you like, I call it bullseye prayers. Straight to the point. Because he knows what's in the heart of the Father. He knows what's in our heart. And the two are, con- are, are joined together. Because the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. He's teaching us how to pray. And he's also standing in for us. Amazing. You need the Holy Spirit to go forward. And I pray that we will consult him. We will, we will, we will call upon him to be our intercessor, our advocate, our counselor. The Bible also calls him a helper. A helper. Maybe you want to pick up a piece of load. There's some load you can carry by yourself. But there's a lot you cannot do by yourself. You need a helper. And that's why when God created man, he said, it is, it is not good for man to be alone. He needs a helper. Someone who will assist him in this assignment so that he will not fail. So he brought him a helper. In life too, all of us need a helper. And the one helper that we have that will never disappoint us is the Holy Spirit. He will never fail. The Bible calls him the helper. Jesus Christ said, I will send to you another helper. Someone who will aid us. Someone who will make things easy for us. Someone who will give us relief. Someone who will assist us. We have him as our helper. Don't go solo. Don't do it. Here. There are places where you do DIY. There are many things where you do not do DIY. Just call upon the Holy Spirit and say, please be my helper. I need help. This year, I have called on the Holy Spirit on so many fronts. So many fronts. I tell you, and God has been amazing. On so many fronts, I would just say, Ah, Holy Spirit, oh, I have come. Hey. Holy Spirit, I have come again. That's how I would be crying. I say, God, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I have come again. Ah, I need help. I need your help. Please, 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 please. Don't let me be put to shame. And they will rise up. And they will sort me out. He's a helper. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Jesus said it, I will send you another helper. So that you do not need to fear what man can do to you. Because your helper will be on ground to support you. What else do we know as a role of the Holy Spirit in helping us to move forward? He's the strengthener. He's the one that will strengthen us. Brethren, I have enjoyed the strength of God. At my place of work, I was sharing with my colleague. I said, oh, I think it was on Friday. Before we are moved, I said, I'm moving house on Monday. He said, Moving house on Monday. Is you moving house? I said, Yes, I'm moving house. I said, Yeah, you moving. I said, Yes, I'm moving house on Monday. He said, But we didn't see any sign. They said, Because people have been saying it's one of the most stressful, one of the most. I said, To be honest with you, I don't even know where the strength came from. Because I will dash to work, go and view, dash back home, go and view. Some places you view, and it's like, Oh my God, why did I come? And I was, you know, driving. All over, all over the place. But God does produce the strength. God produces strength. Still be able to go to work, still able to do church, still able to do my home affairs, you know. God produces strength, brethren. He does. So when you are weak and tired, just say, Holy Spirit, I need strength. I need, I, I'm, and I'm talking about physical strength now. God can provide you with physical strength. He can. And the Holy Spirit does. That you'll be wondering... How am I doing it? How am I able to do it? Even you cannot explain how you are doing it. Because the Holy Spirit, He knows our weaknesses. And He can exchange that weakness for His strength. 
But then rely on him. Rely on him and you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed because he will strengthen you. He's our strengthener. He gives us additional strength. Psalm 20, verse 6 to 8. Psalm 20, verse 6 to 8. Now know I that the Lord saveth is anointed. Now know I that the Lord saveth is anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and are fallen, but we are risen and stand upright because of the strength of God. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can go forward through Christ that strengthens me. It is doable. It is possible. It is achievable. You can accomplish it. You can go forward. And I don't mean go forward as in just go forward physically. Go forward in every department of your life. You can go forward. You can make that extra, you know, progress, improvement upon every department of your life. If you can just hold on to the Holy Spirit as a counselor, the advocate, the intercessor, the helper, the strengthener. He is available. He says, if we human beings know how to give good gifts to our children. You know, many of us, our children, they woke up this morning, right? You took them to the bathroom, you, you gave them their bath, right? You gave them their breakfast, right? Did any one of those children come to you to beg you to do it? They said, oh, mom, don't forget, I need to eat today. No, you just do it. And... And God says, if we as human beings who are not even perfect can do that, how much more, how much more our Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him, please rise up to your feet. The reason why many of us struggle in many areas is because we are relying on our own strength. Bow down your head and just cry to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I need the power to move forward. We have looked at the simple analogy of trekking, cycling, driving a car, or being flown in a plane. Being flown in a plane is without exertion, easy, you know, and I'm likening that to when the Holy Spirit carries us. I want us to go before the Lord and say, Holy Spirit, carry me. I want us to go before the Lord, say, Holy Spirit, carry me. Go before the Lord, say, Holy Spirit, carry me. Go before the Lord, say, Holy Spirit, carry me. Holy Spirit, please be my counselor. Counsel me. Tell me what to do, Holy Spirit. I need to know what to do. Counsel me. Holy Spirit, please be my advocate. Please, come and plead my cause. Brother, make sure you are praying. Say, Holy Spirit. Plead my cause. Holy Spirit, plead my cause. Where I don't have a voice. Ah, where I have been silent somehow. Holy Spirit, I give you my case. Be my advocate. Holy Spirit, be my go between. Be my negotiator. Be my intercessor. Intercede for me. Intercede for me, Holy Spirit. Teach me how to pray, Holy Spirit. Lift up your voice. Say, Holy Spirit, assist me. Help me. I need help. I need aid. Please make things easy for me. Please provide relief for me. And then say, Holy Spirit, please strengthen me. The strength to be able to go forward. I receive it. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Lord, Lord, I pray God you will strengthen me. Strengthen me, O Lord. The five foolish, the five foolish virgins that didn't make it, didn't make it because they didn't have extra oil. That extra oil is the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I'm desperate for you. Holy Spirit, we need you as the extra oil. We're desperate for you. Please help us, Holy Spirit. Please help us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we 